Hello, hello. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Christy Archer of Christy Archer Designs, and I am so excited to have you here today. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my channel. Um, this is a knitting podcast. Occasionally I'll share some other crafts, but it's mostly knitting, and today it is all knitting. Um, it has been just a little over a week since I last recorded. Um, so I actually have a decent amount to share. I have three finished objects and one whip. So we're going to jump right in and start with my first finished object. And this is um, my Thistle Seeds Shawl modified into a cowl. So um, I am very, very happy with the way this turned out. I am ready for spring. Spring is in the air and our temperatures are just amazing every single day right now. Um, I have to enjoy the the nice temperatures while I can because the hot temperatures are just around the corner. Um, so anyway, this is done up in a non-superwash fingering, which is a hand-dyed yarn by myself um, back when I was dyeing yarn. And I cannot remember what I called the colorway. It's been that long. But anyway, um, it doesn't matter because it's not available anymore. Uh, this is a top-down construction. I do not do a garter tab with my shawls because I don't like the looks of it myself. So I just do a nice clean edge and um, I do lifted increases. Um, and it has a fun texture. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. And then uh, it finishes with a seed stitch rib. And it is such a fun pattern to make up. I love the texture. If you have that special yarn that doesn't have a lot of variegation, um, this is a great, great pattern. Like I said, whether you do it up in the shawl format or in the cowl. Um, I think I ended up using about, I think I ended up, I don't have my, I think I ended up using somewhere around 75 grams of this and it was 400 meters or 437 yards per 100 grams. Um, so probably somewhere around 300, 325 yards to do this. Um, the original pattern has you use a single skein of fingering with some scraps for the, um, for the trim. And, uh, but I just did this all out of one yarn and I love the colors so much. Um, so yes, this is my first finished object and I love the way it turned out. Okay, um, my overalls have me looking really wide. It's funny, <laughs> looks funny straight on. Okay, my next finished object, I haven't worn yet, it's been done. You know what, I last filmed, it was over a week ago it was about a week and a half ago because I finished this shortly after. And I have been dying to wear it, but I have been a good podcaster and I have not worn it, but I absolutely love it. Okay, this is the Mujling Tea. Oh my goodness. I'll pop the designers, uh, the front of the pattern up here. I cannot remember the designer's name. Um, I did this out of Drops. No, I'm sorry. I did this out of Cascade Anchor yarn, and it is a worsted weight yarn. I think the pattern calls for a DK. Um, so 
but I was able to get gauge without issue. I could have gone a little looser with the, um, with the fabric, but all in all, I'm very, very, very pleased with it. And excuse her, she has been folded. Um, but yes, I am so excited to wear this and I'm hoping that I will be able to wear this in the summer months. I probably won't be able to wear it like end of July, August. It's just going to be smoldering here. Um, but I, I'm hoping through like June, I'll be able to wear this and then I'll definitely be able to wear this through the winter months and all of that. It will not be a problem at all. This is 50% wool and 50% cotton. And I did not bring the yarn, yarn band in here, but um, the information will be in the description below. Uh, this starts off with the collar and um, it, it, your beginning of round is in the back and then you do short rows to create the, um, the rise at the back of the neck and then the dip in the front. And then you follow a very easy to read chart or I believe it's in written format as well, but I, I prefer charts. Um, but I'm pretty sure she had it written out as well. Um, and then all of these charts are different here. Once you get to here, the chart is the same from there down. Each repeat is the same. There's no increasing or decreasing. Um, so yeah, once you separate for sleeves from there down, it's just a breeze. You've got it memorized. Um, and I am so excited to get to wear this. Um, I love the color. I think it'll be a good neutral for under my overalls or with jeans, or I have a lot of white shorts um, that I think this will look really pretty with. So, yep, that is done. And now I can wear it. I'm so excited. All right, um, finished object. I hope I called this a finished object. I hope I didn't say whip. Anyway, um, my third finished object is um, my winter's weather cardigan, which has not made it to testing yet. So I'm hoping to get this into testing before the end of the month. Um, so if you are interested in testing this, please check out my website for my testers. Um, it will be linked in the description box, uh, sign up. And as soon as the test goes live, I, um, you should check the website on a regular basis. If you don't wanna check the website on a regular basis, make sure you sign up for my newsletters um, because I always send out a testing call through my newsletters. Okay, all of that out of the way. This is so amazing, I love it. This I did out of Drops Flora, and which is a wool alpaca blend. I'm very pleased with that yarn. This is the first time I've been able to use Drops, and um, I was very pleased with Drops uh, Flora. And then I held it together with drops whatever their mohair is called I am drawing a blank right now uh, and I know a lot of you out there are screaming at me right now it's drops whatever <laughs> um, I can't think of it I'll put it here on the screen because my brain's just not working with me um, but this is the beautiful fabric. And I don't have my buttons on yet, uh, but everything else is done. I'm using the same buttons that I used on my green one. Um, but anyway, yes, it is done. This is a top-down construction. There is neck shaping. Um, it has, <clears throat> excuse me, it has a nice sloping V-neck. Um, 
let's see. I used lifted increases, which is generally what I use for my raglan increases. Um, I will say, I've said this before, and I will say it again, the Drops um, Mohair that I used with the Drops Flora, I'm not a big fan of. First time using it, I do like their color selection, but I do not like the way it feels. It is a truly scratchy mohair, which I know most of them are, but I am very much used to Aloft by Knit Picks, and that is a far superior um, mohair. It is very, very soft next to skin. I don't have any itchy or scratchy with the Aloft. This is very itchy and scratchy. It's a cardigan, so I'm not too concerned about it, um, but I don't think I will buy it again unless I just desperately need a specific color. But honestly, I think if I'm that desperate, I would probably just buy a loft and in the white color and dye it up myself. Um, so yeah, this is done and I'm ready to get the buttons on so that I can wear it. Very, very, very pleased with it. I was trying to think, oh, and the gauge on this, I forgot to mention, is a 20 stitch gauge. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a 20 stitch, maybe a 21, but I'm pretty sure it's 20 stitch gauge. I've got a lot of patterns going on right now. Um, and then the other version of it is being done up in, I'm doing two versions within the same pattern, and the other one's being done up in um, High Desert Wool by Knit Picks. Oh, amazing yarn. Really, really, really love that yarn. I'm very excited to see how it holds up with wear and friction under the arms and that kind of thing um, to see how the pilling does. But yeah, so that will hopefully be coming soon. If you want to test, please let me know. It is going to be sized from, I think, 36 to 62 every two inches. Um, and I think I've got it at four inches of positive ease. Again, I've got quite a few patterns going on right now, which by the way, if, um, if you remember from my last podcast, I have, my pattern was accepted for the book and it will be, I will not be able to share anything about it at all. So that will be going on in the background and that book will be released. They are planning on the end of July. That's their goal, but it may be the beginning of August. Um, but yeah, I am so excited I got accepted and I am having a blast with the pattern. So super excited for that one. Can't wait to be able to share that with you guys. Um, okay, and on to, oh, this is gonna be a very short episode today. Sorry. <laughs> um, I do have live stuff I can chat with you about though. Okay, so for my whip, my one and only whip, I am so obsessed with this. And I've made another version of this pattern and it was a pattern I wasn't sure if I was going to like, and I ended up falling in love with it, so I bought a different version of it, and I'm loving it just as much. This is a pattern that will be a staple in my wardrobe. I will make a lot of these. So, are you ready? And I had already used the yarn trying to work up another pattern and my gauge was off. So anyway, I ended up frogging that one and I um, am making this up instead. And oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, so this is, drum roll please. Um, this is the Anchor T by Petite Knit and this is the fingering weight version. 
Oh, I love this. It has not been blocked yet. I didn't even steam block it, but I have tried it on and it fits perfectly. My gauge is a little bit tighter, so I went up one size. Normally, every time I knit petite knit, I knit a, I knit a small, and this one I did go up to a medium because my gauge is tighter. So I am using, it looks so silly because it's, <laughs> it looks like it's for a little girl. Um, but this stretches out beautifully once it blocks. It's going to be amazing. So Anchor T, um, and this is out of um, Knitting for Olive Merino and Ice Blue. Yes. Knitting for Olive Merino, and let's see, oh. Ice blue is the colorway, and this is a very light fingering if you're not familiar with it. Um, it's 100% extra fine merino. I don't know what the um, micron what words today. Um, I don't know what the micron count is on it, but it is very, very soft, which is typical of um, merino. Um, it is 250 meters per 50 grams. Um, so that's uh, like five, like somewhere around 550 yards per 100 grams. So it is a very light fingering. Um, and I think if I remember correctly, my gauge is like 29 stitches per four inches. And I think the pattern calls for 28, if I remember correctly. Um, but very, very happy with this. I just finished my second ball and I have four balls. Um, I'll probably, I may dip into the fourth ball just a little bit. I'm not sure yet. I think I'm going to go ahead and do three uh, the half sleeves like she does in the pattern. Most of the time I would do true short sleeves, but I think because this is one of those, it's 100% merino. So this will probably be once again, a good winter sweater for me here in the desert. Um, so I think I will go ahead and do the half sleeves and I may try to attempt to wear it spring fall and just see how it does. But oh, I am in love, in love. Um, so yeah, I decided I wanted to, while I was stopped, I wanted to do a quick podcast and before I spit splice the new um, yarn ball together. So that is it for my knitting. If that is all you are here for, thank you so much for stopping by. I did not do my spill about uh, please giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, I love being able to spend this time with the knitting community and sharing all of our makes. Um, so yeah, I hope you will subscribe if you haven't already and join us for some more nitty time. So if that's all you're here for, I will see you next time. And if you would like to hear a little bit about my life stuff, then uh, hang on and I'm gonna grab a sip of my milk tea I'm trying so hard to get off of Starbucks. And recently, well, yesterday, they had a price hike of a dollar for my the drink that I always get. I was paying $6.25 for a venti caramel ribbon crunch, and it is now $7.25. And I think that's just a little extreme. So I've been wanting to get off of Starbucks for a little while now. 
and I think that was the little bit of a push that I needed. So, as hard as it's going to be to give up my Starbucks, I think that's what I'm going to do. So, I'm enjoying a nice hazelnut milk tea. And I am enjoying my milk tea, it's good. I, I do a green tea base and then just a little, little bit of um, hazelnut creamer and it is delicious. And it's probably so much better for me than a caramel Reuben crunch. <laughs> um, okay, that was a little side tangent, sorry about that. Other things that are going on, I my pattern was accepted um, for the book and I'm excited about that. So due to that, I talked to my boss up at work and she is just, mm, love her. She is amazing, best boss ever. Uh, anyway, she cut my hours, so I'm only working five days this month, and then I'm off the entire month of May, and there may be a little noise coming in in just a moment. My husband's back from the grocery store, um, but so yeah, I have the entire month of May off in order to, I have two months to get this pattern completely done. And it is not unusual for me to spend six months or longer getting a pattern ready for release. So that's pretty intense. Hold on, my dogs may bark. <laughs> okay, um, I have no idea where I was. Oh month of May, I'm off. So I'm getting, I have two months basically to get that pattern ready. So I don't know how much I will be podcasting over the next two months because that will be my main focus. I do have other projects and patterns that I'm working on in the background that I can talk about. So I may do like an every two week thing for the next couple of months. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, that is that. Oh, glasses. And if my video is darker today, I apologize. Um, I tried to do my ring light and, um, I could not do my ring light with my new glasses because these are now my all day, every day glasses. Yay! I can finally see all the time. Um, I... For those of you that do not know, my site took a nosedive, oh gosh, about a year and a half, two years ago now. And they wanted to put me in progressives, but I tried them and I just could not do it. So they put me in readers and um, I have been doing the readers for whatever it is, year and a half, two years. And it's getting to the point where I really need the progressives now. So I went with the best progressives I could go with. They have a very wide field of view and I am much more successful with these than I was with the other ones. And so, yeah, now I will be wearing glasses every time you see me and I love the frames. Um, took me a little bit to work through the frames. I actually prefer more of a rectangle frame, but um, because of getting used to progressives, I thought the first time around, I would go with a larger frame, um, meaning this way, So because I have three fields of view, not just two. And so this way, there's not as much of a um, I have more space in between the different prescriptions. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, I'm still getting used to them, but these I know that I will be able to adapt to those others. I just could not. It was just not even possible. So yeah, got my new glasses and I love them. They have a nice little, I don't 
know if you can see, but they have a fun little green, well, let's see. I think you may be able to see that. I don't know, I, because I can't see. <laughs> So anyway, it has a nice little clear green on the inside and then the black on the outside, which I think is really cute. Um, of course, my favorite color would have been blue, but I have to go with what's available. So um, what else? Oh, I am getting ready to finally, finally redecorate my living room. And let me take a step back real quick. Um, for those of you that do not know, I have moved a lot in my lifetime. And most of the time when I move into a new house, um, I will decorate specifically for that house. And we have been in this house four-ish, almost four-ish years now, something along those lines. And um, I'm still dealing with all of my furniture from my previous house, which is fine. But my previous house, I decorated it. It was not my style. I am definitely more of a minimalist, modern decor. That's more of my thing. I prefer very, very very minimal. Um, I don't like a lot of stuff around. So anyway, the last house I was in previous to this one, I did a um, somewhat modern farmhouse. The furniture, uh, the sofa that I'm on, if you are familiar with Joanna Gaines, uh, Magnolia Home. This sofa is part of her architectural collection, which is, it is an incredible sofa. And this sofa is what dictated my entire house previously. Um, so I love the sofa, but I've had it for quite a few years now. And like I said, the look really isn't me. So, because of getting this, um, this, uh, them accepting the pat my pattern for the book, I'm going to be able to take that money plus a couple of paychecks, and I'm not doing anything expensive, obviously, but I will be able to redo this room, and I'm hoping to be able to do a little bit to the dining room as well but I have started ordering the stuff to do this room. Um, and I think the month of August is the month that I will actually do everything because I'm going to, um, this wall back here is going to be wallpapered. I am so excited about that. I ordered the wallpaper. It should be in sometime this week. And um, I think I said before that I had never wallpapered one of my houses before, and that is not true. I forgot about one time I had a little house and I wallpapered the walls and the ceilings in one of my bathrooms, and it was such a fun look. But anyway, that was when I was young, young, young. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, wallpapering this wall, I've got to prime this wall before I wallpaper it, and then I think I'm going to paint all the walls in my house white, I think. Haven't completely decided on that. And then I have a uh, stacked slate um, fireplace in front of me, and I am going to go in and fill in all of the cracks and give it a lime wash um, and then it's a slate slab um, hearth in front of it and I'm going to give that a lime wash and so the colors in here are going to be baby blue and white and with touches of um, hammered um, hammered it's 
not hammered aluminum, it's hammered metal, but the hammered aluminum kind of look and some rustic woods. Um, it's like driftwood. Uh, the entryway table is going to be a driftwood and I have that ordered. I have the coffee table ordered. Um, there's still some decorative things. I'm not going to be doing a lot, but there will be a few decorative items that I will put in after I get all of the main pieces in. But the sofa is the last to be ordered. And um, that will, I probably won't be able to order the sofa until end of July, which is why everything I'll do at the month of August because um, where I work, we're closed the month of August. So I will, um, I'll probably, everything will be done the month of August. So I will bring you along on that little journey. Um, what else? What else? I have been doing hiking, uh, really enjoying that. I'll pop in some footage of my hiking adventures and, um, yeah, just keeping busy and enjoying life to the fullest. So I think that's it for today. Um, if you are working on anything amazing, please tell me about it in the comments. And if you have any fingering weight, light fingering weight, um, t-shirt knitting patterns that you can suggest to me. I would love to hear about those. Um, I think I may very well do petite knits. Um, she has another pattern. What is it called? I'll pop a picture up of it um, and the title, the name of it and everything. Um, and then I have a fingering weight pattern but it is a standard fingering weight and I need a light fingering weight because I have a ton of light fingering weight yarns. And so I think I'm going to convert that to a fingering uh, to a light fingering weight gauge and make up a couple of those. Um, and then I would love to do just a basic t-shirt like casting not a drop shoulder but the same concept as a drop shoulder but with um sleeves you pick up for the sleeves i would like to do that as well or i could do a contiguous sleeve um or a saddle shoulder sleeve something in that um style that just looks like an everyday t-shirt i would like a pattern for that as well if you know of anything um so yeah, definitely pop that down below uh, and let me know if you have any suggestions on that. And until next time, I guess that is it. I will pop footage of my um, my hikes in uh, at the end of this video if you would like to see where I live. And I will see you again next time. Bye.